What's going on guys? My name is Brandon and as you can see over my shoulder we are just about going to finish the budget 2001 KTM 250 two stroke. Stick around. So what we got to do now guys is there's a little bit of play up in this little shock mount right up in here. So what I've got is I've got a rebuild kit for this shock because there's no better time right now than to do it. I found it online. It's like 35 bucks, and it comes with every little component to rebuild the upper part of this shock and the lower part of this swing arm. So while we're here, we might as well do it right now and get any little bit of play out of that while we can. Now originally when I put this shock all together, I was just going to leave it with that little bit of play in there and I said well what really is it gonna harm because I'm not a professional racer but then the more I started thinking about it the more it bugged me because now is like the best time it's the easiest it'll ever be to get to so I went online and I just started looking around for different kits that I could get to replace this shock and again I'm trying to stick with the budget theme on this bike so I mean, this isn't a, you know, no expenses spared type project. I am trying to keep it budget minded and still have it look good, but still be very reliable and functional. So I ended up finding a kit online that rebuilt this whole thing. It wasn't a whole lot of money. I think it was like, you know, 30, 40 bucks, something like that. But, you know, in the long run, it was a wise decision to do it now because everything is so in the open. Look how open it is. You can see what I'm doing here is I'm just measuring with a set of like calipers to make sure that I have that bushing centered evenly in that space. And then I just pound the seals in using a socket and then put it all back together. Now, when you do stuff like this, whenever you're pounding in bearings and um, things like I'm doing right here you always want to try to find a socket that touches the outside edge of the bearing never the center or never in the middle always on the outside yeah what a huge improvement now guys this is so much better now before when I pull up on the back of this swing arm I could actually feel and see a little bit of play right in there where it or move and I could actually feel it like clicking no more it's super tight there and it didn't have any play here it was already good here but I obviously as you saw I replaced all the bearings there now every time I looked at this bike my eyes were always drawn to this one spot the spot you see me doing right here and that is uh, the side cases they look horrible now the old me would have taken the cases all off and got all new gaskets and everything else I'm trying to not be quite so uh, OCD as I get older with this stuff and I just masked it off I used some silver wheel paint that I picked up at the local automotive store and then hit it with three coats of clear all right guys so now we're gonna try to clean this thing up and get this looking real good it had a uh, carbon fiber cover on it uh, I don't know if we're gonna use it again or not but we'll see I'm actually quite impressed guys how this pipe cleaned up now a lot of the stuff that you see me doing here I'm just kind of experimenting I don't know if it works I'm just trying it so this is just a piece of steel wool that you get at the hardware store it's three zero so it's fairly fine and I'm just wiping the pipe down with a little bit of uh, aluminum metal polish and it seems to be working right I'm just trying different things Oh yeah, that pipe will clean up that'll do alright it's just gonna take some elbow grease that's all but what really ended up working well, just it was an experiment, is I was using the steel wool and it's kind of like a uh, waterless car wash. It, it smells wicked good. I love the smell of the chemical, but you'll see me use it here in a minute. And I just end up spraying it on and then just wiping it down. There it is right there. And I just wipe it down. Look how good that works. And uh, I do know that steel wool works great on chrome. Uh, it actually takes out rust and pits and everything. It does a real good job. Now I've got the pipe all back on. I've got some upgraded hardware in there. And yeah, I think this looks awesome. It's got a little tiny ding right here, but I'm not going to worry about that. In the uh, carbon fiber cover that was on it, kind of like rubbed right here and kind of like scratched into it. But yeah, this is a good pipe. I mean, it's a gold series. It's FMF gnarly pipe. So uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it just like this. I'm not going to put uh, the guard back on it. And, you know, if it gets dinged up, it gets dinged up, you know, whatever. I'll replace it if I need to, but I'm going to leave it just like this without the guard on it. So now I've just been cleaning up parts. Now, this is part of the air box that goes into the back of the subframe. And this goes something along the lines like 
that and it slips into that subframe. So I've got this all clean. This has pretty, been pretty time consuming for me. I've been using a combination of kerosene, engine degreaser, and purple power to clean all this stuff up and it's coming out pretty good. And then for the back of this aluminum subframe, I use some of the mag wheel cleaner, not the acid base, but the lighter stuff. And I've just got some parts here hanging to dry. So this is a mud flap here that screws in uh, it, this mud flap actually kind of goes back like here and there's two screws that screw into that air box. Well, look at how gnarly these look. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to uh, clean these up a little bit and spray paint them just to make them look good, make them last a little bit longer. Now, Harbor Freight can be a real good source for a lot of these like wire brushes and just little different utensils and implements to help clean. We'll just throw uh, a little bit of paint on that. That'll be good. Yeah, look at that. Huh? Look at that. Looks good. And this is just a real soft... Um, like wound bristle brush. Really, really fine. There we go. Now we can just paint that stuff up. Make it look like new again. Oh, this stuff sprays like, oh, I remember this stuff. This stuff comes out horrible. Yeah, I was gonna shoot this can of the garbage. It came out so bad. Holy. Yeah, this stuff is garbage. Yeah, don't buy that. That's horrible. Right out of the thing, it would barely spray. But that's what I got, so we'll make it work. Because I don't got all day to wait around for paint to dry, what you gotta do is uh, go get your wife's uh, hair dryer, and she'll usually keep that up in the bathroom. So um, yeah, just sneak it out of there. Don't tell her. Because if you ask her for it, she's gonna say no. So. Let's do it. You won't regret it. You get your parts dry in half the time. Just heat them up good just like this. You can get two or three coats on it. You can probably get it out of there and get it back before she even knows it's missing. You get caught though. Don't tell her I told you to do it. You're on your own. Now I've installed the air box onto the rear subframe and now I'm just getting ready to install it. Here's a little tip guys to uh, polish up bolts and stuff. So you see how that kind of looks kind of ratty? Well that's just an old uh, rag from when we were polishing. So that's just got some aluminum polish on it. So I just chuck the bolt up inside my drill and then just spin it. And there it is. Pretty slick, huh? No charge for that tip either guys. Now another thing you can do if you've got some like black plastic and stuff like this that just doesn't look good. I've had really good results uh, by heating it up with a torch. That has some kind of mixed results, but that works too. But if you're looking to restore some plastic, I have a video. It's a great video. I'll put a link up above. You can check it out, but it's a surefire way to make it look good. So the next thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to rebuild the wheel bearings on this. And I don't really know what's involved in it. Uh, not really sure but I bought what's called an upgraded kit so we'll find out and it's got new seals and everything so now one of the ways that I found for me guys that keeps things uh, focused so that my project doesn't spin out of control and I forget what I'm doing is I actually do one thing at a time and finish it like this wheel like I will work on this wheel I will start it and I will not stop until it's done and then I can set it aside try to get that juleper out of there Let me get a, a small screwdriver. There we go. Okay. So it sounds like they're two millimeters wide or not bigger in diameter. Yeah, came right off. So we, I guess we're not going to use that. I know that they had uh, some issues. They, there was some slop in it. That's why I'm replacing them. So. All right. Well, let's... Uh, Pound them out, I guess. So what I'll do is I'll try to push from in here, try to push that bearing out that side if I can. I don't know. I think it will, but we'll see. Oh yeah, it's going.
Just nursing it back and forth. I'm going that side, then that side, that side, and that side. See, check this out. See that? It's almost out. So, probably do it just like this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, there's the bearing. There's the little sleeve. I bet that's the original. Now we just gotta do the same thing to the other side. So you see that bearing right there? Right on that back end of that? So that's where I'm hitting the bearing out. I'm just driving out. Obviously we're not gonna save the bearings, so I don't need a special uh, puller to get the bearings out. I'm just driving them out, so. Yeah, pretty simple. Piece of cake. Old ones out, gotta get the new ones in. Now we'll just tap the new bearings in. Try to put them in even. And another way you could do this is heat up the hub to expand it and put the bearing in a freezer to contract it and then it would just drop right in. That works too. Just go until they bottom out pretty much I believe. That's pretty neat looking, anodized aluminum. So that'll go down in there. And then we put the other bearing in. Pretty straightforward I would say. I mean I could have heated this flange up like we did before but I don't know if it's, if it's necessary. These are going in pretty easy. Pretty simple fix to end up with something that's gonna handle and feel like new. Now I guess these seals go in next, maybe? I'm going to put a little bit of grease on them. That way they'll go in a little bit easier, hopefully. So as you can see I'm doing here, I'm just taking that brush and just putting on a little bit of grease. Then that makes the seal go in a little bit easier. And I'm using, again, an appropriate size socket that matches the outside diameter of the seal. And then I'm just pounding the seal in, making sure that the seal goes in nice and straight, as you can see here. This is, guys, I just take a uh, gasket punch and punch a hole through the top of this uh, grease container and all this is just a flux brush this is made for uh, putting like flux when you solder copper pipes that's what that is there we go oh yeah we're in business now that's the money right there all I'm doing to clean these wheels up, guys, is I'm just taking some triple R steel wool and I'm just going over it. And triple, I think the most, the finest steel wool they make is like four zero 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 zero. All right, I guess it's time we can get this tire mounted. So, yeah, I don't think it's a directional tire. Nope. So, all I'm gonna do is. I've got some just soap in a bottle with a little hole in the very end of it and we'll just put a little bit around the bead just to help get it on there. And all that is is just a little bit of dish soap mixed with water inside that bottle. Hey guys, I love this tire stand. It's made a huge difference as far as like getting it on there you know now we built this tire stand out of some scrap metal and the white thing that you actually see is a cutting board that i bought at walmart so this was a diy project but it's super handy there so that's on now kind of the hard part now now i gotta put the, the tube in it and then put the bead lock in it and yeah so I'm going to go clean up these two things and we'll come back and install it. All right, <clears throat> so now i got to try to put the uh, tube in it without popping it or destroying it. I figured out, you got to be a contortionist. you got to put the one, you got to do the one hand up behind your neck and the leg behind your head trick. Alright, so I got the rim lock in. It was difficult, but I did it. And it's right, actually right here. That's where I'll start, I guess. 
Now, if I had to do this all over again, I would have put the tire on, then I would have put the bead lock in it, then I would have put the tube in it, and I think it just would have been a lot easier. I ended up putting the tube in first, but check out this tire stand, guys. Look how easy this is, how much uh, time this saves. It just spins all around. It just makes it super easy, and you'll be able to use this for dirt bike tires, street bike tires. If you're going to do your own tires, you should build one of these. 36 and a half right there. So now I'll put a little bit of never seize on this wheel lock. That way I don't have to worry about it seizing on here if I ever got to change the tire again. The one thing that you didn't see me do that I did off camera is I chased the threads on the wheel lock and I also chased the threads on the nut that I'm screwing on just so it went good together. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to mount the sprocket but I want to make sure that it's going to fit good and it's not going to come loose so I'm going to try to just clean up this flange a little bit. I'm just using a little bit of scotch Bright. that way if there's anything underneath it that it'll that would prevent it from sitting flat well this should clean it up and give it a nice mating surface. Alright so check out this bling guys. Look at that huh? Now look nice. And I have all new uh, sprocket bolts. These bolts have the, the uh, locking compound already on them and the nuts are actually locking nuts also. Now it's really important that this be torqued because these will back off just like the last ones did. So I'm just going to bring them up loose with this and then we'll come back and torque them. Now the sprocket I'm using on this is called a twin ring, meaning that the center of the actual hub is aluminum, so it's nice and light, but the outside ring is actual steel, so it wears really good. Pretty sharp, huh guys? We're just minutes away from actually putting the rear tire on. Now these bolts right here screw in to the back of the swing arm, and it's what adjusts up the, uh, the tension for the chain and moves the axle blocks back and forth. And these are famous for like stripping out. So because we were successful getting the old ones out without any issues, I made sure that I uh, ordered brand new ones of these right from uh, KTM. So that way we don't have any problems. And I'm going to lather them right up with never sees because I don't want any problems down the road. These just thread into this back here. Again, with big fingers. Alright guys, it's time to start making this thing look like a dirt bike. Get this thing together. You want to make sure you grease your shaft too. Make sure your shaft is good and greased up. Check that out guys, how good does that look, huh? Kind of like subtly ties in the orange of the KTM up to there, up to the dampener, and they'll just be real subtle things here and there. So yeah, doesn't that look good, huh guys? Check that out, love it. Wicked happy, starting to come together, starting to look like a dirt bike now. All right guys, this is where it's starting to get fun right now. So I just had a, big supply of uh, fasteners come in and I get all my stuff this isn't sponsored just so you know I get all my stuff through a company called Bell Metric and if you guys have watched any of my other uh, like rebuilds like when we did the four-wheeler I buy all my hardware through them so because they have very um, a huge 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 stock of supply of all kinds of metric fasteners anything pretty much you could want that's on anything that you're dealing with, you can get. So, so check this out. So the triple, tr uh, the triple clamps have this style bolt in it, and but you can see how the heads are kind of like all they're kind of chewed up looking. You know what I mean? They just kind of you can see where they've had wrenches on them. So I wanted to upgrade. So check this out. Um, 
Now, normally I would have put like stainless steel in it, but stainless steel and aluminum, which is what the triple trees are made out of, do not uh, go well together. So I went with a yellow zinc, uh, yellow zinc plated. So basically what I did was is they sent one of these with one of my orders and you size up your thread pitch, then you size up the length of your fastener, and then you just go online and it'll tell you you know, you just look it up. It's got a wicked easy website. So like these, that's a 30 millimeter. Then you size up your thread. That's a 125 pitch. And so then you just find a 30 millimeter, 125 pitch bolt in the diameter that you want. And you find the diameter out by just dropping in here. So that's a number eight. So that's easy enough. So now we know it's number eight, 125 pitch. 30 millimeters long then you just pick the head type you want and I wanted this this is gonna look sick guys check this out this is what makes these builds fun right here this is what like really sets it off these little tiny details look at that look how sick that looks doesn't that look nice it matches the uh, the reliefs on the forks so yeah that's going to look wicked nice, don't you think, guys? And I'm going to do the same thing down here. So I got these all new. Um, I got all new for the calipers. So, yeah, it should look nice. And I got a bunch of extra stainless to switch out some of this stuff. So, yeah, it should look pretty neat. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, the one thing that I didn't mention is cost. Now, you will be amazed at what things cost. Don't go to the big box store and try to find this stuff with a hardware store because you're going to pay an arm and a leg. We're talking pennies is what I paid for these bolts, and it's high-quality fasteners. They have everything that's metric, including, like, electrical supplies, you name it. They have it all. Oh, yeah. That just came right up and fell up. Look at that. Yeah, you, these uh, actually are actually kind of like chowdery. They're all, listen, hear that? They sound rough. They feel a little rough. All right, so then there's that spacer. So we, it looks like we reuse that. So all I'm doing is I'm just hitting the inside of that bearing. I probably almost drive it all by hand, but. Right there, that's it. No. Yep, it's moving. And it's out. And there's the Baron. Oh, this one's wicked. Wicked chowdery. Listen, I don't know if you can hear it. Yeah. It's all notchy feeling. Okay, good. You know, guys, if I'm really being honest with myself, I'm, I'm not overly happy with the looks of these stock wheels. Don't get me wrong. These are DID wheels. They come factory. Uh, and these are wicked expensive wheels to replace. Um, but I'm kind of dead set on having black wheels. So, you know, you get something in your head and you just got to do it. You can't rest until it's the way you want it. So... But right now, like I say, it's not in the cards to do it right now. This is supposed to be a budget build, and that would blow the budget. I mean, we would be adding probably another $500 to the build, if we're honest with ourselves about it. And um, right now, I'd rather take that $500 and put it in towards uh, something else that's more functional and useful other than just cosmetic looks. Take that. Then I just use a socket that closely resembles the size of the bearing and pound it in. And you can hear that bottomed out. That's that. Now we'll put the snap ring back in. Yeah. 
Do the same thing. Don't forget to put your spacer in. That'd be a bad day. Have to get it back out without it. Again, slap some grease around in there. Yeah. And just put a little bit of grease on this because this is a uh, like a bushing that rides in this bearing. Just like that. Good. Now I've taken the front axle and I've rubbed it down with some scotch Bright just to keep everything so it's nice and slippery smooth. And now I'm just putting a thin coating of uh, grease on it. Alright, so this is where it's going to get a little cumbersome. But it is what it is. We just hope for the best. We're trying to do our best. Kind of using my foot to help prop everything up. Now, kind of got it started, so now I'll put a little bit of grease around this so it doesn't end up getting seized inside this fork leg. And it'll end up squeezing out on the end. It'll make kind of a bit of a mess, but that's okay. There. Now we can put our nut on the other side. I'll put a little bit of Never Seize inside of that. Now what I'm doing here is I've completely stripped the front caliper so I could get everything clean. So I just cleaned it up with that non-acid uh, wheel cleaner. And then I'm going through and I took all the components and sanded them down nice and smooth, lubricated everything, and then put it all back together so everything works and looks silky smooth. There, look at that, guys. You see how smooth that is now? I've got everything all polished up and that's working nice and smooth and that's how it should be you don't want any binding and of course I'm gonna put upgraded hardware on this let's get one started oh yeah that looks so good guys love it put a little never seize on it. Like I say, we don't want these seizing up in the brakes, you know. Alright guys, so I've mocked up the seat and I mocked up the stock gas tank on it and oh my god, this thing is starting to come together and I'm really loving how it looks. Now, what do you guys think of the uh, stock tank? Uh, I think I'm gonna go with this. Uh, it had a Clark oversized tank with it also, which that is right there. Now, that's great if you're doing like enduro and stuff like that, but I don't need the extra fuel because my uh, intentions are is I'm gonna race this. So obviously we don't need a huge tank on it. So all this scuff marks here, this the plastics cover all this and they go into that area, but yeah. So right now I'm waiting on the plastics and I'm gonna share a secret with you that I didn't uh, disclose right off. I was hoping to have them by now, but on December 14th, I ordered plastics from a company called CE Moto in Italy. And as of right now, as far as I can tell, uh, they're the only company in the whole planet that sells white plastics for this model KTM. This is an 01 250 EXC. Now, if you guys know where I can find plastics, let me know. But as of right now, uh, supposedly the plastics, as of a month ago, were stuck in New York. And I called uh, United Parcel Service, and they said I had to do something with, the manu with this person who sent it. Well, the person who sent it is pretty much not responding to me anymore. So CE Moto is uh, really not responding. And uh, there's obviously a huge language barrier between Italy and English and us, so yeah. So if you guys know where I can find white plastics, let me know. Uh, if not, 
I may end up going with just all black plastics and white graphics. I don't know. I'm not sure yet. I'm kind of a little discouraged, uh, but I'm trying to keep my spirits up because I'm hoping that they'll arrive. But like I said, I ordered those plastics and I paid a ton of money for them. Uh, and I ordered those on December 14th and I have not seen them yet, but uh, they didn't have any problem taking the money. So there isn't much left guys. Uh, I got the carburetor to rebuild. Got to clean up the air filter. Everything needs to be torqued. So I got to get the torque sequence and I got to put a torque wrench on every single nut and bolt on this bike. Um, it has to be done. No ands, ifs, or buts. Um, and I just want to clarify something with the rear tire. I just wanted to put a known pressure on it. I brought the rear tire up to its maximum rated pressure when we were doing it just so that it would seat the bead properly. And I'll probably run maybe around 12 PSI of air uh, eventually. But right now I just left it up there so that the bead would sit nice and the tire would uh, fit nice on the rim. So we got the carburetor to rebuild, get the air box back together, get all the plastics on it, torque everything. And then it'll be time to put in fluids, coolant, um, I've got the radiator clamps, uh, they're in the mail. I should have those within the next few days because they say with silicone hoses, you can't just use a regular uh, hose clamp because it'll cut into them. You're supposed to use a hose clamp that has a specially rounded edge. So that's what I have for those. So those are coming. And yeah, then we'll be putting in coolant and we will do a few heat cycles and start it up. Um, I've got the chain sliders. Those are coming in the mail. I should have those in the next few days. Um, those are coming from TM Design Works. Um, yeah, so pretty soon we will be starting this bike up. We will be ripping it up and we will be racing it. And that's all there is to it, guys. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you guys for tuning in. If you're wondering about any of the things that you see me using, you can check the links down below. And if you guys are wondering about some of the things that I'm doing before it makes it up to YouTube, you guys can catch me on Facebook and on Instagram. I'll have links down below. New videos every Friday. So until next week, guys, I will see you then. Take care. Stay safe. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye. Come, come.